guys welcome back to my channel so I asked you guys on my community page and on my Instagram come follow me over there if you're not already I asked you guys what video you wanted to see next I am going to be filming all four of those videos within the next few weeks but it was between this one and the moon through the houses so I'm gonna do that one next but today I'm going to be giving you guys my tips on how to begin your spiritual journey. A lot of people ask me like how I got into spirituality and where is a good place to start if you are wanting to embark on a spiritual journey of your own. So we're just going to jump right into it and not waste any time today. The first thing I want you guys to know about spirituality and the spiritual journey is that it is so highly personal. There is no right or wrong way to get in touch with your spiritual sign. So it's great to watch videos like this or to take advice from other people who are into spirituality, but I promise you there's no right or wrong way to do it. It is your own journey. So I'm going to give you guys my tips on where I would begin, but I'm not going to give you every single like detail as to how I started through my journey because that takes away from your own spiritual journey. It's a journey and it's very personal. It's personal to you. Nobody can tell you how to get in touch with your spiritual side. And before we jump into my tips, let's just quickly talk about what is spirituality. Spirituality is defined as being more concerned with the spirit or the soul as opposed to the physical and material parts of human existence. But the way that I define spirituality, what spirituality means to me is getting to the truth of who you actually are. Spirituality is about remembering who you are. It's about uncovering all of the layers that keep you at a distance from the truth of your soul. So our trauma, our societal conditioning, beliefs that you may have unconsciously taken on from your parents or the people who raised you, all of those things and more can leave us jaded and they can kind of overshadow the truth of who we are at a soul level. So spirituality is about uncovering all those layers and getting back to the root of who you are. Spirituality to me is also about making the conscious decision to live and act and operate from love, from our heart and from our soul, rather than from our ego. The spiritual journey is the most magical journey of self-awareness, self-understanding, self-development, and just really figuring out who you are, not who your parents want you to be or who society wants you to be or the insecurities or the beliefs you have that have shaped you into the person that you are now that may be very disconnected from who you are at a soul level. Spirituality to me is also about understanding the divine and eternal oneness that exists between all things. It's understanding that we are all connected. We are connected to the earth. We are connected to each other. We are connected to the universe, the animals, nature. We are all connected. We all come from the same source. So spirituality is kind of the understanding of that, to me at least. So now let's get into my tips on how to embark on your spiritual journey. I've narrowed it down to five, I think. Yes, five. The first thing that I'm going to suggest, and this is what I tell everyone who asks me where to begin, this is so great if you do not know where to begin on your spiritual journey, and that is meditation. You guys hear me talk about meditation all of the time, and it's for good reason. I don't just preach meditation constantly to like fit in and be trendy. Meditation is the greatest thing you can ever do for yourself, in my opinion. The reason meditation is so beneficial if you're wanting to get in touch with your spiritual side is because meditation allows you to know thyself. Meditation is the practice of becoming familiar with your mind, your thoughts, your impulses. It's becoming familiar with yourself and with your ego. People always say to me, I can't meditate because I can't stay focused. And I want you to completely throw every single thing you think about meditation out the window because meditation is not about sitting down, 
closing your eyes and suddenly you're focused on absolutely nothing and there are no thoughts going through your mind. That's literally not how meditation even works. You're going to sit down, you're going to close your eyes, you're going to focus on your breath and then thoughts are going to come in. You're going to get distracted. Your mind is going to wander. And all we're doing in meditation is we are noticing and observing that we are having these thoughts and that our mind has wandered and then we are consciously redirecting our focus back to the present moment aka back to our breath over time you are going to notice that your mind starts to wander less meditation is not what a lot of people think it is but anyways before i keep going off on this rant about meditation the reason why it is so beneficial to getting in touch with your spiritual side is because of the level of self-awareness that meditation gives you. You are going to slowly realize that rather than your thoughts controlling you, through the practice of meditation, you now become in control of your mind, your thoughts, and your impulses. This is going to translate over into your everyday life. A lot of us go through life and we react to things based off of our subconscious patterns, our subconscious belief systems. We react to things based off of our trauma. We react from a place of emotion. Meditation gives you the tools and the ability to no longer operate like that. Meditation allows us to actually think before we act. And then we are making decisions and we are reacting to things from a place of groundedness and being centered and being calm. It just really helps you to make the decision that you want to make from your soul and from your heart rather than an ego reaction. Meditation makes it easier to discern what is my ego and what is my heart or what is my soul. So the amount of self-awareness that you bring into your consciousness by practicing meditation will transform your life and it will also open your eyes to the way that you speak to yourself, the way that you speak to others. It will open up your eyes to your impulses and to your ego and just to the way that you have been acting and reacting for your whole life. Self-awareness is such a huge part of spirituality. I will forever recommend practicing meditation if you don't know where to begin in your spiritual journey, start there. Don't worry about whether or not you're doing it wrong. There are so many amazing guided meditations for free out there. I am going to link my favorite YouTube channel, Boho Beautiful Meditation and Yoga, I think is the name of the channel, but she has the most amazing guided meditations. I think her meditations are so perfect and amazing for a beginner, but don't worry about whether or not you're doing it wrong. Let the experience be whatever it is. This, this video wasn't supposed to be about my passion for meditation, but you get me going and I can't stop. So that is my first step meditate. It will change everything for you. And it is the quickest way to raise your vibration, eliminate stress, and get in touch with the truth of who you are, which is what spirituality is all about. Okay, so my second tip for embarking on your spiritual journey, this is kind of like a fun activity that you can do, and that is to find a metaphysical shop in your area. Now, you do not have to physically go to a metaphysical store. You can look online at a shop or you could just Google different like spiritual, you know, like interests and stuff. I understand not everybody has a metaphysical shop near them. You may not be able to leave your home right now to go to a metaphysical shop because that's really spiritual. But anyways, this is actually something that I was encouraged to do by a psychic I knew when I first got into spirituality, like right when I went through my spiritual awakening. Just browse around with no expectations. Look at everything, even things that maybe you would normally not think you would be into. Just browse around the shop. Whatever piques your interest, whatever you are drawn to, start there. I was immediately drawn to crystals and tarot cards um, and astrology, but I had already been into astrology before my spiritual awakening. 
um, but I was really into crystals and tarot cards. And so I just started researching. One of the funnest parts about embarking on a spiritual journey is the research and the learning and the knowledge that is out there for you to gain. I started really looking into crystals and crystal healing. I started really learning about tarot. I learned how to read tarot. I started buying tarot and oracle decks. And one thing just kind of led to another. Try anything and everything. And if you like it, great. Stick with it and research it and learn about it and practice it. And if you don't like it, then that's fine. You should always be doing whatever resonates with you, whatever feels natural to you, whatever you are drawn to. And there are so many different spiritual interests and practices and like rituals that you can get into. So maybe it's astrology, tarot cards, crystals, Reiki, yoga, herbs, you know, there's so many different things. I was really drawn to Dr. Joe Dispenza. I talk about him a lot. I started really looking into his work. There are so many different things that are out there and maybe none of those things resonate with you. The thing is the spiritual journey is so magical. Once you start diving into different things that interest you, the information is just going to fall in your lap. It happens in a very magical and divine way. Things just start coming to you. You actually don't have to go out looking for it. It honestly just falls in your lap when it's meant to be at the perfect time. But again, as a reminder, spirituality is an internal experience. So you don't have to go out and like do anything. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to have anything to be spiritual and to get in touch with your spiritual side. So if you want to get into that stuff, go for it, but don't feel like you have to. They're just tools. They're tools to help you along your journey, but they're not like, it's not necessary to have any of that stuff. All right. My third tip, this is something that is so easy, so powerful, and I feel like so like underrated. And that is to talk to the universe, talk to God, whatever you believe, whatever resonates with you. If you don't know what you believe, just talk to the universe. Just talk out loud, talk in your head, talk to something greater than yourself. If you don't know, you know, what you believe, honestly, just ask the universe to show you the way tell the universe that I'm ready to open up spiritually. I want to embark on a spiritual journey. I don't know where to begin. I don't know which direction to go. You know, will you please show me the way? I think a lot of people turn to spirituality in times of suffering. So many people that come to me and ask like, how do I get in touch with my spiritual side? How did you get into spirituality? Most of those people come to me when they are in pain, when they are suffering, when they don't know where else to turn. There's just something inside of them that kind of pushes them that direction. But a lot of times it is when people are in pain or suffering or trying to recover from something, when they're in need of healing. You know, the spiritual journey is, is a healing journey. Talk to the universe. Because when you do that, you are opening yourself up to receive that guidance. But you are also setting an intention. You're setting the intention of wanting to connect with your spiritual side. And intention setting is so, so important. When we are specific with the universe, when we tell God what it is that we want and what it is that we need, you will be amazed at the way God works for you and opens up doorways and opens up your eyes. You will be so amazed when you realize that the universe is listening and has always been listening. And now that you have set that intention and you've kind of opened yourself up to that, you'll be amazed at the way things magically start to fall again, right in your lap, right on your path. You will start to be guided in the way that you are meant to go. And that's when your spiritual journey will begin. You have to allow yourself to be guided by spirit and to be guided by your soul and to be guided by your intuition. You have to open yourself up to that. So set that intention and just talk to the universe. All right, so my next tip, shadow work. Now, before we even talk about shadow work, I strongly urge you to do your own research on what shadow work is. Also to understand that doing shadow work can be exhausting. Shadow work is one of the most powerful 
things, in my opinion, to place yourself on the path of enlightenment. Shadow work is one of the most healing things I've probably ever done in my life. It's something I will always do. It is so powerful and it has transformed my soul, my heart, and my whole life. That being said, shadow work is not something that you want to do all the time. It's not something you need to do every day, um, but it is very healing. It is very eye-opening. It is very enlightening. It really is. So what is our shadow? Our shadow is the unconscious parts of our personality. Our shadow is the parts of ourselves that we have repressed, aspects of ourselves that we don't like. It's the aspects of ourselves that we have kind of deemed as bad or negative and we have repressed it. We've shoved it down. We've shoved it out of our conscious awareness. We have just completely pushed it away from us, but it exists within us. Our shadow is there. I'm always telling people that ignoring things does not make them go away. So if you hate certain aspects of yourself and you just want to put it out of your mind and forget about it, that's great, but it doesn't go away. And the thing is our shadow plays a huge part in the way that we navigate through our lives. It's unconscious though. It's unconscious or it's subconscious. So it's often navigating us and we don't even know that it is. We are making decisions and we are reacting and we are thinking certain thoughts and saying certain things from an unconscious place, from our shadow. We don't realize that our shadow side is kind of like dictating our life a lot of times. Most of the things that exist in your shadow are gonna stem from your childhood. They are your inner child. They are wounds from childhood. For example, let's say when you were young and you were in school, you went through an experience or multiple experiences where maybe you were like embarrassed by a teacher. Like a teacher made you feel really embarrassed or the other students made you feel really embarrassed. This could then result in an unconscious belief that you're stupid or that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. This will stick with you and it can really cause issues for you throughout your life and later in life because now you have this imprint of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart, I'm stupid, I shouldn't speak how I feel, I shouldn't ask questions because I'm gonna get laughed at and I'm gonna be made to feel embarrassed. But again, we push it away and we repress it to the point where it becomes part of our subconscious or our, our unconscious. So we don't realize that that belief or that trauma or that shadow exists inside of us and it's dictating our lives. What it's doing is it's getting us away from the truth of who we are. It's covering up the truth of who we are. That's an example of something that can exist in your shadow side. Doing shadow work allows us to transmute those things into healing. We bring the dark from the shadow into the conscious, into the light, and we transmute it. So doing shadow work brings those shadow aspects of ourselves into our conscious awareness. There's a lot of different ways you can do shadow work, but my favorite way is by doing journaling, um, using shadow work prompts and journaling about it. So you can find an endless amount of journal prompts to do shadow work. The reason it's so beneficial is because to me, it's just the most powerful way of really facing those things and bringing those things into your conscious awareness. It is so healing. It is such a release. It is so liberating. It seems scary. Like some of the questions when I do shadow work, especially when I was first getting started, I would like avoid certain questions because I was like, I just don't want to answer that. Like, I just don't want to go there with myself. I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. I like, I know deep back in the back of my mind what the answers are, but I just don't want to face it. It could be scary, but when you actually do it, I swear you'll be like, why didn't I do this a million years ago? Like, why was I afraid to do this? But it can be difficult. It can be heavy on your emotions and energetically. So that's why I said, don't be doing shadow work every single day. Do what's healthy for you. So for example, a shadow work prompt you might find, like one of the questions might be, what is a promise to yourself that you have broken or you continue to break and why? Why do you keep breaking that promise to yourself? So you could see why shadow work is so powerful because it actually makes you stop 
and think about these things and think about the why. Why do I do this? Why do I keep doing this? Another one could be, you know, what is an embarrassing moment that happened to you and why did it make you feel embarrassed? So again, it's getting to the root. It's actually analyzing these things that we have avoided processing for sometimes years, right? There are so many amazing shadow work prompts. Shadow work is just honestly, it's incredible and it really is such a release it is so healing and it really does just make a huge difference in your life. I recommend shadow work to anybody. And as you can see, the common theme with spirituality is awareness, self-awareness. It's about being consciously aware of your behaviors, your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, the energy you put out into the world, becoming aware of your insecurities and the ways you hold yourself back and the beliefs that you have about yourself and about the world and about other people and you know, all that stuff. It's all about awareness and bringing things into your conscious awareness because if you are not aware of something, then you can't change it. All right, the final tip I'm gonna give you guys, and again, there's a million things I could you know, recommend you guys do, but it's your journey, not mine, and it's yours to travel, and the magic will unfold in front of your own eyes. But the last tip I have for you guys is, can you guess what it is? My favorite thing ever, astrology. <laughs> now, I do not mean go out and learn astrology and study astrology and become an astrology enthusiast and like a professional astrologer. No, you don't have to do any of that. What I want you to consider is just using astrology for self-development. Astrology is the most powerful tool for self-awareness, self-understanding, self-development, self-improvement. A lot of people go through life with certain behaviors, certain tendencies, certain like personality traits, or maybe you find that the same types of things keep happening to you. You keep finding yourself in the same circumstance over and over again. You keep dating the same type of person. A lot of people never stop to think and actually analyze, why am I the way that I am? Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I operate the way that I operate? A lot of people never actually really stop to ask those questions. So what astrology does for us when we look at our birth chart, it forces us to actually stop and analyze ourselves. And it opens our eyes to so many things about ourselves. I remember what really made me fall in love with astrology was when I discovered what a moon sign was. And you'll hear a lot of astrologers say that that is what made them fall in love with astrology and dedicate their lives to it was the discovery of a moon sign. When I found out what a moon sign was and what mine was, it was the first time ever in my entire life where I felt understood. I started reading about it and I was like, everything I've ever felt, thought and experienced that I've never been able to verbalize or even make sense of in my mind, I'm reading, I'm reading all of it right now. It's all being made clear to me. And it was this literally like mind blowing experience. The amount of self-awareness that astrology can bring to you is, is life changing. Astrology can transform your life because it gives you such a deep understanding of who you actually are and why you are the way that you are. Look into your birth chart, look into your placements. You do not have to go super, super, super in depth with it. It is the most eye-opening thing you will honestly ever do. There's a reason why so many people in the spiritual community, so many people that are into spirituality, there's a reason why a lot of them are into astrology, at least to some degree. Understand at the very least your sun, moon, and rising look into those and that's really going to open up your eyes to so many things it's going to answer so many questions like that's one of the coolest thing about astrology is when you start learning about your chart it answers so many questions that like you didn't even know you needed the answer to it's just eye-opening it literally is enlightening so i really suggest giving astrology a try if you're not already into it and just learning more about yourself. It, it really is life changing. All right, you guys, this video is so much longer than I thought it would be. If you made it to the end, you are a real one and I love you. And I really hope that the things I talked about in this video were helpful. I hope everything I said just helped you in some way because 
you get me going and I'm off on a rant and suddenly it's like a 40 minute long video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you good information on how to start embarking on your spiritual journey. But remember, do what resonates with you. Do what feels natural to you and just trust just trust your gut, just trust the path that you are placed on and just explore, have fun, and don't get too lost in your spirituality. Yes, we want to be concerned with the soul and the spirit, but we are also human and we came here to be humans. It took me a long time to figure that out because I got lost in spirituality for a while. I'm gonna stop babbling now because I feel like this video is so long. People are probably not even watching. I love you guys so, so much. Please, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Hi, no, you just wanna bite me? <laughs>